Good morning and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Emily Kobier-Shell and I am a member of the Build-Up Editorial Board. Build-Up is Europe's largest international portal for energy efficiency in buildings. It is a unique community that provides the opportunity to discuss, contribute and collaborate with other experts in this field. Build-Up aims to bring together stakeholders working in the building and construction sector to reap the collective intelligence about energy reduction in buildings by encouraging knowledge exchange. Our editorial work is organized around the topic of the month, which allows us to dig, to dig deeper into specific themes. Each month, several items are produced by Build-Up, such as overview and technical articles and written interviews. But that's not all. Build-Up also offers the opportunity to host webinars on topics related to energy efficiency in buildings. More recently, Build-Up has also opened its doors to distinguished experts in the field to share their knowledge in front of our cameras in our Build-Up expert talks. The Build-Up portal shares daily the most relevant events in the field of energy efficiency, but we also participate actively in many European events around the year, such as EPP Center and REVA conferences, H2020 Interreg and Cost Action events, Covenant of Mayors and more, always with the aim of further disseminating their results and helping to create high quality media content. The Build-Up portal is updated daily, reaching around 120 new items each month, including news, events, publications, articles, and video content. But Build-Up is not only us. Build-Up is a community and we invite you to be a part of it. By becoming a member, you can contribute by uploading your own content, and promoting your project news, events, case studies, reports, and more. By contributing content, Build-Up will help you to reach a broader audience through our online portal, our social media channels, and our monthly newsletter. Visit us at www.buildup.eu to find out more. It is a pleasure for Build-Up to host today's webinar titled Knowledge Transfer for Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Sources in Buildings, brought to you by Build-Up, Federene, the InPlan Project, and Prospect Plus Project. Today's webinar is intended to begin exploring the topic of knowledge transfer for energy efficiency and renewable energy sources in buildings. In particular, we will learn about how Build-Up facilitates knowledge transfer in the sector and how ongoing projects are developing knowledge sharing strategies at the local and regional level by hearing from the in-plan and prospect plus projects. In today's agenda, we'll start by hearing from Leta Bularit Svanoli, Build-Up Ambassador, architect and lecturer at the University for Business and Technology, who will briefly introduce the topic of knowledge transfer and how Build-Up acts as a facilitator in this field. Then we'll move to the Prospect Plus project, which will be presented by Julia Pizzini, senior energy expert at the Institute for European Energy and Climate Policies. This will be followed by a presentation on the InPlan project by Tomislav Novosel, expert advisor at the Northwest Croatia Regional Energy Agency. And finally, we'll have a brief Q&A discussion moderated by Binda. We invite everyone from the audience to please send us questions through the GoToWebinar platform that can be answered during the Q&A session. Please specify which presenter or project your question is for or if it is for all speakers. We remind that you will be able to find the webinar recording on the Build-Up portal and on our YouTube channel in the coming days together with the presentation slides. Now we will move to our first speaker, Build-Up Ambassador, Architect and Lecturer at the University for Business and Technology, Vleta Vula Ritzvanoli. Vleta, I will pass the controls to you. Just one moment. Okay, Hello. The floor is yours. You can hear me well? Yes, yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks, Emily, for passing the, the, the information to me and uh, um, looking forward to have a great discussion today. It's a very important topic, which we will discuss it further in uh, three different sessions, as you already presented. Uh, I am Lerta Bularizvanoli. I'm an architect, founder at uh, um, PBR uh, Atelier and also lecturer uh, at the university. I am active in the industry and also in the academia. So uh, one of the, my most preferable uh, topics is knowledge transfer because I understand how it works in between these two. 
Actually, the days nowadays that we are discussing um, uh, all around Europe, but not only, are in front of uh, challenges, uh, global challenges, and climate change is one of them. And countries, either countries or either uh, academia or either the industry, have, need to have uh, a prompt responses to several challenges, and these responses has to be well thought. Uh, otherwise, we need to lose a lot of time uh, coming to a decision-making process in the in what we want to or how we want to answer to these global challenges, and that's where uh, the knowledge transfer is very important and comes to, to the fore. Uh, the way it works is that uh, uh, knowledge transfer brings together all the participants, all the stakeholders within the industry and uh, encourage them to collaborate and communicate. And that's where build-ups come in, 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 in helping us in communicating and bringing all the stakeholders together. It uh, uh, helps us or it, it enhance innovation on the way of how we communicate and collaborate. It's not about the academia or the industries to start and build something from the beginning, but they can use examples and exper experience and expertise from the previous projects and pre previous results. Developing expertise is another Another uh, very important topic which uh, uh, built up is doing very well and we were going to talk about this in a few minutes when we uh, discuss about how build up is working. Boosting energy efficiency or boosting competence within the projects and industry it's also uh, what knowledge transfer it's uh, giving us or, or helping us to do. And finally, improving decision making, because as I mentioned at the beginning, we need to uh, give answers to big challenges very soon and very, uh, we should be very responsible in how we uh, respond to these challenges. Uh, how do transfer knowledge works among or between EU projects? Uh, Transferring the knowledge in between different projects uh, developed within EU uh, help not only building internal capacities within the projects, but also helping other capa uh, building capacities uh, within the partner countries. Not all the countries within EU are at the same level of doing their policies and their strategies, economical strategies on how to respond to different challenges. And that's why the transferring the knowledge between countries, between universities, or between the industries help us break the level to, uh, or, or increase the level of response to different countries and partner countries. Another very important uh, uh, notion which is used is also knowledge donation. Knowledge donation refers to the communication based on individual levels or individual wish to share the, uh, the knowledge we uh, or the inter intellectual capital that we have with others and increase the uh, or uh, encourage others to do the same with what they know. In this case, we build institutional memory. Why is institutional memory very important? Because not only in, in uh, private sector, but institution also uh, face the, uh, the challenge of uh, uh, employees leaving the institution or a company. It is roughly estimated that 20% of employees leave the, co the company or the institution during the year. And in this case, almost 90% of the knowledge leave together with the employee. That's why it's very important to share the knowledge between within the project or within the institution or within the company in order to bring this memory or to, to build this memory from the previous projects or previous challenges that the institution or the company may have been facing. Um, supporting thematic expertise it's very important as well because that's what build up is doing with the uh, topic of the month 
every every month built up is deciding about a topic which is uh, related to a certain expertise and bring together all the practitioners or people from the academia and industry to contribute to this uh, to this topic and in this case the the knowledge is transferred between different people within the same topic and within the same expertise and, uh, and innovation may be uh, uh, brought out, out of this knowledge transfer in between the um, parties involved. It is very important also to consolidate the innovative, uh, innovative tools uh, and communities on how they share information between each other. So uh, uh, EU projects have, uh, in this case, in, in the inner energy sector, uh, within the buildings uh, and construction industry, have um, uh, defined their innovative tool through build-up. I will do it. I will, I will explain it in a, in a few minutes. Uh, why transferring the knowledge of energy efficiency and energy uh, sources in the construction industry is very important. Uh, uh, it is important because it, develop, it needs to be developing strategies of how to copy and paste the best practices. Copy and paste the best practices of um, um, projects, different projects, individual projects. Copy and paste the information from the academia to the industry. Copy and paste the best policies and strategies between the countries. Contribute to skills development and capacity building. Uh, we, we have a very good uh, video from uh, Luis Logres, uh, especially talking about how, to, uh, how the skill can be developed and how the communication and knowledge transfer between academia and, uh, and uh, industry can work. And you can find it in the build up. Uh, build up portal. Um, we may share the video later on. It also assists in evaluation of alternatives and site selection or uh, help the suggestion uh, and give the best suggestion for the compensation and financial possibilities of the projects. We all know that uh, um, and from previous also from previous uh, um, researchers we may found that uh, one of the biggest challenge from uh, implementing energy efficiency and renewables into the building sector is financial. It, it, it's the finance. The, the investors, especially the private investors, are searching for the uh, possible finance, which may bring them or boost them, the, uh, the, encourage them to to finance the, the uh, energy efficiency standards in their into their buildings. In this case, uh, countries may uh, bring together uh, people or practitioners to uh, evaluate their best uh, strategies on how to finance and invest uh, their sources into these topics or into these um, standards. Identify the potential complex and resolution processes. The copy and paste, which we discussed it previously, is not only about copying and uh, pasting the standards uh, between the project, it's also copy and pasting the, uh, the, uh, the, the circumstances of the projects and how to overcome this, uh, these circumstances and how, how, what was good for one project and how can we do it better in another one. Uh, in, in project management, we say that one of the best tools uh, or one of the uh, tools that help the projects to uh, multiply uh, their, their results is the documentation. In this case, documentation is uh, working a kind of knowledge transfer from, from a project to, the, to another one. The same shall be working uh, within the com different communities. Um, the final one is the, uh, um, collect the baseline data for evaluation and audit proposals. Uh, try to find the best solution of audited and how does it work from a country to a country or from a project to a project. All this uh, information is uh, available at the built up portal, uh, which uh, um, Emily has presented briefly. 
which is the largest platform uh, among the EU uh, projects and bring information and references to different kind of projects of uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy in, in renewable sources in, uh, in buildings. So it's completely dedicated to the construction industry. It has been uh, established by European Commission in 2009 and now it's uh, managed by CINEA and it has a lot of since 2009 it has continually um, added information and added um, um, results of different projects which have been shared within different communities how uh, what is the scope the scope of uh, build up is to be the main uh, or, or the connection point between different stakeholders including policy makers, including uh, uh, practitioners, industry stakeholders, researchers and students. It um, um, meets there are specific, specific objectives on how build-up is being developed. It's reacting the benefits of Europe, uh, collective intelligence or collective information and disseminate this information to different uh, different industries or different uh, audiences. Uh, encourage the exchange uh, of knowledge between practitioners and industry, industry and academia, academia and policy makers, and also to the uh, um, wide audience of the people interested to be informed about energy efficiency and renewables energy in, in buildings bring together the stakeholders of course and uh, improve the, the behaviors the, the general behaviors of the uh, people in this industry and also support the um, uh, implementation of the directives regarding the energy in, pub, uh, in, um, in, in, in uh, energy efficiency directive or a european green deal which is very important on how they are implemented in different countries and how other countries can be improved in their way of implementing these directives. There are, in, in, in um, build-up, we used to say that there are two approaches that we, uh, we follow up, because which feed each other. It's inside approach within the ecosystem of the build-up, uh, where the ecosystem it's uh, it's um, um, brought together have brought together a lot of practitioners professionals which contribute with their content and disseminate the information through overview articles technical articles interviews videos webinars so each month they have a topic for which they develop each content and depending from the uh, audience they uh, they uh, disseminate this information to the broader audience doesn't matter if you are ready to read an overview article you can sit and read the article or if you want you are maybe you are just driving and you want to see just a video or hear a webinar you are uh, ready to or you are able to do it within the build up and also uh, bring this information to the outside community, which is a broader community of build-up through the news, events, publication, case studies, good pra practices and, um, and good references from the other projects. Uh, Emily man already mentioned that there are, there are uh, all, uh, 120 content which are added to the website every month. So, so if we are talking about a topic, uh, then about that topic there are a lot of content added, so it has a lot of information for everyone. And then what we do is try to bring the uh, audience, the general audience, the audience which contribute to the, to the uh, construction sector and try to get the information from them and bring back to the, uh, to the uh, ecosystem of build up, try to re rediscuss this information and bring together, bring back to the audience. So it's feeding each other, the ecosystem of build up it's feed, feeding the community and it's bringing back again to the ecosystem. 
Um, why is built up an example of knowledge sharing? Because it is, it's one of the main points where the information about energy efficiency and, and, and renewables energy in construction sector is being discussed. Um, it also share information from other source, European sources, so not only within the European Commission, but also other sources are, are being used to disseminate the information to the community. And all, uh, it also enables to share the content uh, within the stakeholders. So every stakeholders of construction sector can find himself uh, information within the build up portal. <coughs> Uh, how it is being done, it's daily content, um, build up um, people, build up uh, employees are, um, and professionals involved uh, do engage to uh, create daily content for um, and feed the, the portal with the daily content and new production of uh, what is um, what is happening in, in the industry and specific information for different projects. Webinars each month, we are already following one. one um, this month, there we are discussing about knowledge transfer. Uh, last month, we did, we did discuss about digitalization in the building sector, or a month before in February, we discussed about renovation energy and efficiency renovation of historic buildings. So every month there is a topic, a very important topic of the sector, which feed the uh, information with webinars. Usually with, for webinars, uh, build up, um, collaborate with other other stakeholders of the of the industry or other stakeholders of, from the academia and bring together the information to the to the audience. Uh, topic of the month I already mentioned it's uh, um, next month for example we we will discuss about uh, um, with the life cycle assessments of the buildings which is a very important topic and for which we we will have uh, other events um, in the pipeline or in July we we will discuss about energy efficiency affordability for households which is also a very important topic so follow uh, following uh, every month the, the webinars and the, the content that um, build up create it's very important for the uh, each of us to be informed of what is happening and um, when it is happening and how is our response to what is happening to the industry User-friendly portal, it's very easy to be used. Uh, you may check it yourself. It's, it has, um, um, you can very easily find the topic of the month and find what are the content for the topic uh, based on what you are interested in. Board of Ambassadors uh, um, is a board of people, practitioners, professionals, more than five, 550, if I'm not wrong, uh, from all other all different EU member states, which are uh, meeting and deciding about the uh, topics that and deciding about the calendar of the information to be shared in the portal and deciding about the strategies how the information shall be disseminated in the in the portal. And finally, even events participation build up is very active in participating in different uh, different events organized all around Europe. So it can bring the information very quickly to the portal and inform the um, the pool of people of almost seventeen thousand people which are part of the portal so far how the information has been transferred from so it brings a lot of sources within the portal and uh, uh, disseminated as, as information who is the audience the audience as we already discussed is the co co broad community of construction sector including the industry the policy makers the um, uh, uh, academia and also uh, the the users, the building users, these are the ones that have that shall finally inform, being informed about what is um, what what is happening with the, within the sector and 
be able to to um, let's say decide about how their building will be uh, will be um, used and how the building shall use the uh, benefits of energy efficiency and other sources possible. Um, the sector uh, is always always involved in the information sharing between the um, construction and other sectors involved as a stakeholder and finally a wider society. And why it is all uh, important is the final footprint that we uh, try to decrease the final footprint of uh, um, dioxide carbon uh, of the construction sector and the industry and this way impact the uh, implementation of uh, European environmental goals. I'll close it here. I may speak a lot about the build up, but we may do it later on the QA session. Thank you. Thank you, Bletta. Thanks so much. Okay, we'll move to our next speaker now. We have Julia Pizzini. Uh, let me give you the controls. Okay, Julia, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Emily. Um, hello to everybody. Thanks for inviting us. Uh, my name is Giulia Pizzini. I'm working at ICP, which is the Institute for European Energy and Climate Policy, uh, which is a research foundation based in the Netherlands, uh, where 25 plus experts uh, work. And I am the coordinator of the Prospect Plus project, which I will present to you today. Um, and I think that it's very linked to what Blerta presented before, because what our main aim is uh, to make knowledge transfer amongst uh, public authorities. Um, H, uh, Prospect Plus is an H2020 project which started in September uh, 2021 and lasts for 42 months and it has a predecessor project which was called Prospect, hence the plus. <laughs> uh, it has 11 partners uh, which are divided into knowledge partners, uh, networks and internal mentors. Uh, let me check if I managed to change the slide. I know that there is a bit of delay. <laughs> but Emily, I'm having a show. Oh, here, here it goes. Okay, sorry about that. So uh, as I said, the main objective of Prospect Plus is to emphasize the need to reduce uh, um, local authorities' dependence on subsidies. Uh, this is because we have a big challenge uh, in front of us. Uh, it's been estimated by the European Commission that in order to reach uh, our goals for uh, 2030, uh, we need more than 3,000 3, billion euros. Um, and only around 15% of these are available as grants or public funding, uh, which means that the remaining 80 to 90% of funds will need to be leveraged from the private sectors. Um, we noticed that, especially when it comes to smaller local authorities, um, there is very little understanding uh, regarding what other options there are aside for subsidies, um, which include uh, working with the public sector. Um, therefore, uh, our main aim is exactly to build knowledge and to bring together those local and regional authorities who have experience and have implemented projects and can show full-scale results and lessons learned, but also those who have tested different approaches uh, and can share openly uh, what work and what doesn't work. Um, in order uh, to make those who are only starting their adventure with investing in uh, sustainable energy to feel a bit uh, more confident and uh, less alone, let's say. Um, but what are these uh, innovative financing schemes? Uh, these are, um, there are many options which are often more flexible and quicker than subsidies and don't require applying or writing proposals. Um, so these, the, the list you see here uh, is a non-comprehensive uh, list. Of course, these are only some that we uh, touch upon with the Prospect Plus project, but uh, just to read some, uh, there is citizen finance, for example, crowdfunding or uh, energy cooperatives or communities, 
energy performance contracting, but also less known ones as internal contracting, uh, green bonds, guarantee funds, soft loans, revolving funds, and third party financing. Um, how uh, we um, make our capacity building program, we have uh, four phases. So the first phase is um, we, of course, prepared some learning material and tools. As you can see here, the Prospect Plus project covers five thematic areas, uh, two concerning buildings, so public buildings and private buildings, but we also go beyond buildings and touch upon public lighting, transport, and we also have a cross-sectoral category, which is uh, where, for example, energy communities are covered or which encompass uh, two or more of the other four categories. Then we move on. Uh, so, so all of this material, which I will describe a bit later, uh, is available on the Prospect Plus website. Then we move on to phase two, which is engaging participants and forming learning groups. So for this, uh, we have a call for application for both mentors and mentees. Mentors are the experienced partners that I mentioned before, and mentees are other local and regional authorities willing to learn from the mentors. We select them uh, through a matching process and we match in different groups, uh, mentors with mentees, depending on the uh, thematic area and depending on the financial instrument that is needed uh, from the mentee. Then there is the central phase of our project, which is the learning cycle. So we have four learning cycles. I will show the timeline uh, later. And each learning cycle is uh, composed by uh, four steps plus two. Um, so you see here there's a step zero, which is just a, a webinar, a presentation webinar. There is one for mentees and uh, two for mentors. And then we go into the different uh, actual steps of the project. So in the first step, uh, it's an online session uh, where the mentor presents its successful uh, project. In step two, which is again an online session, the mentees present their ideas and discuss with the mentors on the feasibility. Then the step three, which is, let's say, the um, best part of the experience, it's a physical meeting. It's two days uh, of meetings where the uh, mentees can usually visit the mentor or vice versa, depending on the different learning methods that I will describe in a second, and where um, the mentees will be able to discuss not only with the main mentor, but with also the rest of the colleagues of the mentors from other units, other departments, on how the project has been implemented in real terms. And then there is a, a last step, which is step four, which is uh, an online follow-up, where again, mentees and mentors can discuss on the uh, next steps to take. We also offer two bonus master classes in Brussels, one at the end of the second learning cycle and one at the end of the fourth learning cycle, but I will uh, again describe to them in a second. We have three different methodologies, which you can see here below. Uh, we have peer mentoring, which is offered to very advanced mentees, so to those who have a very concrete idea already developed, and they're matched with one mentor who follows them on a one-to-one -one basis. And then we have study visits and local mentoring, which are similar, where more than one mentees are matched with one mentor. The only difference is that the study visit is uh, has a European scope, so uh, mentees and mentors can be matched with uh, different cities or regions from different countries, whereas local mentoring is taught to overcome the language barrier and um, is therefore foreseen to happen in one member state only and in one language which is not English, because we think this is, uh, we saw in the previous project that this is often a barrier that um, functionaries and uh, uh, civil servants in local authorities still uh, face. <clears throat> Sorry, these are some pictures uh, from some of our study visits that have happened in the first learning cycle that was just concluded in Prospect Plus. So you can see that really people go to visit the project and get to meet uh, the whole team of implementers. And this is the timeline that I was talking about before. So we have four learning cycle. Uh, the first one has ended. The second one is ongoing. The third one will be happening in the fall 23. And now we are recruiting mentees 
and the fourth one will be in 20 will take place in 2024 and you can also see the timeline of the two master classes that are offered now in october 23 and then one towards the end of the project and then of course uh, there is uh, the the phase after which is the monitoring of outcomes uh, so uh, we are uh, of course collecting data in order to uh, find out what which are the most successful projects and which are the best methods to transfer the knowledge uh, and then we of course look to replicate also the project outcomes beyond the project duration so we also build a community of practice and offer uh, some other tailor-made uh, tools and advice, which I will be describing in a second. But before I go into that, I wanted to show you uh, three examples, uh, which uh, took place either in the Prospect Project or now in the Prospect Plus Project. So the first one uh, comes from the Prospect Project, and here we matched two mentees with a mentor, which is the um, energy agency of Maribor, Energa, in Slovenia, uh, who successfully implemented uh, an EPC project in 2019, one of the biggest of the region, um, and uh, which uh, saw the refurbishment of 24 public buildings, uh, mostly schools and sport halls. Uh, the project was very uh, big for for the the city of Maribor because it was it's an investment of over 12 million euros and resulted in. Uh, almost 6,000 megawatt hours saved yearly, uh, which meant at the time um, almost 450,000 euros of savings. I guess it would be much higher seeing the current energy prices now. Um, Maribor, so Energap was matched with two mentees, which were the cities of Debrecen in Hungary and Kökelberg in Belgium. They both wanted to learn about EPC because they both had the need to uh, refurbish uh, buildings. Kindergarten in, in the case of Debrecen and in the case of Kökelberg, the aim was to replace lighting in public buildings that are rented to private people. So, of course, um, we offer capacity buildings, so we're not really looking at the uh, end end of the, of the process, which would be um, the implemented projects, but rather in the knowledge transfer. And from this particular case, we saw that there were uh, three different levels of change uh, in the two mentees, so cognitive change, relational change, but also skill development, uh, which was very important uh, to us. Because first of all, the two uh, mentees realized that it was uh, extremely important to hire an external expert. So they uh, collaborated with uh, neighbors in the case of Kokelberg or with the en local energy agency in the case of Debrecen, and they hired a person who could deal with the project planning. They also um, learned that it's very important to build a relationship with different governance levels, both with higher level of governance, so with the national or, re or regional um, uh, levels in these cases, uh, in order to foster the implementation of the project uh, and also to start a dialogue with citizens. So to uh, foster acceptability and also explain through different communication campaigns to their citizens why these projects are needed. And they also understood, of course, uh, the process and what steps are required in order to uh, set up such uh, an initiative. The second example that I bring to you is a bit different, is from Prospect Plus, so from the first learning cycle, and this uh, is could be also seen as a not so good example, but, um, but we think that it's very important to learn also from mistakes. So in this case, we had uh, a mentee from Vilnius that also wanted to learn about EPCs, and she was matched with a um, mentor from Spain. And what turned out is that the legislation, the PPP legislation in the two countries is not similar, so it's different, which meant that the solution adopted in Spain could not be adopted in Lithuania. Um, however, uh, we uh, followed with the mentee other possible solution, and we learned that recently she, uh, with of course uh, the municipality of Vilnius, she enrolled in an interreg project. So uh, this is to say that it's very important to foster discussion and dialogue uh, amongst local authorities to make them understand that they can um, go beyond or, or learn from mistakes of others and also form partnerships with 
other local governments in order to apply or to start other projects. And the third example that I want to bring to you is again from the Prospect Plus project, so from the uh, just ended learning cycle and is a, um, a peer learning between the two cities in Spain, Valladolid and Valencia. And this is important because we saw that uh, not only uh, it was very important from, for the mentee to learn from the mentor uh, about EPC in buildings, but it was equally important for the mentor to get some knowledge out of the mentee because it turned out that Valencia is very advanced uh, in uh, setting up energy communities and one-stop shops. So uh, a two-way communication was established between the two uh, local authorities and this also fosters, uh, of course, further collaboration. Um, something else which is related uh, to what Belerta said before about the importance of cooperation between European projects is that, uh, for example, some of our mentees are also applying uh, to manage energy and they take, place, uh, they take um, part in the manage energy masterclasses. Uh, and again, as I mentioned before, Interreg projects uh, or also ELENA projects. So some of our mentees have participated in ELENA projects uh, from, uh, promoted by the DID. Um, of course, aside for our uh, internal mentors, we also have a team of facilitators who come from the network, so from Energy Cities, uh, Euro Cities, Federen, and uh, the Upper Austria Energy Agency. And they follow uh, the, um, the exchanges to so the capacity building programs. Uh, so in case that both the mentors and the mentees are external to the consortium, we offer this uh, figure that can uh, foster discussion and uh, uh, touch upon the most important points in the exchanges between the cities. Um, aside for the actual peer learning project, we also launched a community of practice, which is meant to engage to engage those who are not participating as mentees or mentors. Uh, so everybody is welcome to apply. With the community of practice, uh, we offer online meetings, uh, we offer replication webinars, policy dialogues, and also collaboration space. Um, for members, which is hosted on the Eurocities uh, network. Uh, you can participate as an active member, so if you have something to say, as an observer, so just participating and learning from others in our webinars, or as an expert, so as a speaker, for example, in one uh, of the uh, activities we organize. And in case you're interested in joining, there is a QR code on the slide, which you can follow to get to the registration form, where we ask you some questions, so we want to learn something from you in order to match you and um, point you to the most uh, the, the best tool for you and speaking about tools just a very quick overview of the knowledge that we created within the project um, i will not uh, go into much detail for the sake of time but uh, this is one of the tools that we um, developed within the prospect plus project is an assessing um, tool for assessing the financial maturity of the project and it's basically a self-assessment tool that cities and regions can use to check the level of bankability on a scale from zero to a hundred of their idea uh, of sustainable uh, energy measure. At the moment it's only available for participants in the capacity building program but at the end of the project it will be made publicly available. And then uh, if you navigate through our website, you will find handbooks like these ones, uh, which uh, are uh, touching upon the different thematic areas, plus uh, one special one on citizen finance. Um, and uh, here are other tools, for example, the financial indicator calculator, the glossary of financial terms, the recommendation matrix tools for decision making. And then last but not least, we have a database of uh, replicable practices, which are divided into promising practices, innovative practices and good practices. Uh, this is how they look like, but I will not uh, go deep into their description. And very last thing, I want to say if there are local or regional authorities that are in the audience, there is still time to apply to the third learning cycle. The deadline uh, is actually tomorrow, but we're thinking of maybe extending it uh, by some days. Um, and in any case, uh, you can uh, just click on the application form. The process should take you more or less 30 to 45 minutes uh, to fill out. 
and we offer this time three local groups on top of the general calls so one in italian one in polish and one well of course in english because it's in ireland but that is dedicated to irish local authorities um, this is the team of the prospect plus project but i already uh, mentioned them more or less um, and yeah i think sorry that's it here are my contacts in case of further questions or if you're interested to participate and i leave it here and then i'm happy to answer questions in case there are any in the q a uh, moment thanks a lot thank you julia thanks for that okay let's move to our last presentation uh, we have thomas love with the in plan project uh, thomas love you should have the controls now Oops, sorry. let me check Mm. Yeah, I think it works. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining this presentation. I will give you a brief overview of the Life in Plan project. As I said, my name is uh, Tomislav Novosil. I work at the Northwest Croatia Regional Energy and Climate Agency, which is, as the name suggests, a regional energy and climate agency that covers the Northwest part of Croatia. Uh, and in Plan is a project I also have to say was uh, co-written by Julia that presented before me. So a huge thank you to her as well, uh, because without her, this project wouldn't be. Uh, so it, this is a live project that will last for three and a half years. It started in November, so it's still relatively fresh and is go ongoing for another three years. Uh, it's coordinated by us, Beregea, and I'm the principal coordinator. And we also have uh, a few other regional, uh, regional energy agencies as partners, as well as some uh, knowledge partners on board. But what is the project about and uh, why am I talking about it here? uh if we've already heard a lot of information about the targets that the eu has in terms of uh, its energy and climate ambitions and in order for those ambitions to be achieved uh the most of the burden will have to be taken up by our cities by our municipalities and by our regions and they are uh quite a complicated uh, entity that consists of a lot of physical and non-physical elements including a lot of construction, a lot of uh, infrastructure, both uh, energy infrastructure, green infrastructure, blue infrastructure, uh, as well as, as I've said, some non-material uh, uh, issues like uh, ownership and law, uh, cultural heritage, and so on and so forth. And all of these elements have to be uh, taken into account when uh, we are trying to tackle the energy crisis and are trying to achieve uh, Europe's energy and climate ambitions. And uh, there are quite a few challenges when that is uh, concerned. Uh, first and foremost, uh, a lot of municipalities, unless they are, uh, uh, sorry, municipalities and regions, unless they, they are uh, very strong regional governments as the ones we can find in uh, Germany or Spain or very strong uh, municipalities that also functions as function as states for instance uh, Vienna they very often have a lack of capacity or mechanisms to actually enact and enforce uh, binding energy and climate policies uh, meaning that they usually rely on national laws and national uh, legislations so that their hands are very often tied when it comes to the implementation of their plans. Uh, there is very often a lack of vertical and horizontal integration or at least alignment of strategies, plans and policies. So this is usually between the national and the local and regional level. And there is often a, a lack of systemic and integrated approach to energy and climate planning. This is usually delegated uh, to non-binding uh, plans and strategies that I will mention later. And finally, and most importantly, there is uh, often a lack uh, in alignment between uh, planning and the allocation of financial resources, as well as other resources within, uh, within a municipality or region. So in in, in, in short, what I'm saying is that there is very often a disconnect between planning and implementation, uh, especially when energy and climate are concerned. Uh, cities, regions uh, have quite a few uh, planning tools, such as uh, sustainable energy and climate action plans, such as European Energy Awards, and many other similar mechanisms that, uh, although are uh, excellent tools within themselves, uh, lack implementation uh, mechanism or enforcement mechanisms, meaning that they are not mandatory, they're not really enforceable, and they can be ignored uh, by the municipality itself, as well as other stakeholders within them. 
uh, on the hand of implementation, the tools on the local and regional level, except in some of the cases I mentioned, are usually uh, quite limited. So as I've said, uh, the, the planning tools such as sustainable energy and climate action plans do basically provide a baseline assessment. They do pro provide a vision and goals, uh, and they do provide uh, indicative measures to achieve them. But what they are missing are uh, enforcement mechanisms and enforcement tools to actually implement and achieve uh, the measures to achieve the visions and goals. Uh, on the other hand, uh, cities and municipalities and regions have spatial plans. Spatial plans are mandatory and they are basically law. If something is stated in a spatial plan, that cannot be easily ignored. Uh, and spatial plans also exist on a variety of levels. There's regional ones, uh, city ones, or municipal ones, urban ones, and special uh, spatial plans. The exact terminology differs from country to country, but in essence, they all function similar uh, similarly uh, they are by the, their nature uh, interdisciplinary tools that should take into account all of the elements uh, of a territory that they cover however uh, what they are mostly uh, used for unfortunately is zoning and the enforcement of national legislations uh, here you can see a few examples of the visual part of some spatial plans in which you can immediately spot some potential issues so if you look at uh, the right hand side image you can see the uh, energy infrastructure map within a spatial plan of croatian uh, municipality uh, and the green lines represent natural gas lines red represents district heating and here you can immediately see an issue where there is a uh, almost consistent overlap between natural gas and district heating creating unnecessary competition between two uh, energy sources basically decreasing the uh, technical and economic efficiency of both and also makes decarbonization quite uh, difficult because it makes it difficult to push for for instance uh, district heating or and especially decarbonize district heating as an alternative to natural gas since natural gas exists uh, everywhere uh, in this specific case and this is basically where uh, in-plan comes uh, into play. The, the basic idea behind the project is to uh, develop uh, and uh, roll out uh, the so-called in-plan practice, which is basically a support structure for integrated uh, spatial energy and climate planning, meaning uh, planning that utilizes the existing tools of spatial planning, to integrate energy and climate concepts within it and therefore provides uh, municipality cities and regions with the capacity to not just plan but also implement and enforce uh, measures needed to achieve their energy uh, and uh, climate ambitions uh, and goals and basically the three elements that uh, build this practice are on the one hand the planning methodology itself on the other hand, uh, a capacity building mechanism uh, which will target both regional uh, energy, climate and development agencies, as well as uh, municipalities and regions themselves, uh, and a, uh, a mechanism to uh, match the proposed measures with concrete budget lines within the local and regional uh, budgets in order to ensure resources exist for the measures that are being planned. Uh, the project itself will be tested out in five EU countries, Ireland, Sweden, Romania, Italy and of course Croatia, uh, where we will also test out a two uh, stage capacity building program uh, targeting first in the first stage uh, the uh, agency that I mentioned and then in the second stage also the local and uh, regional uh, governments. And the timeline of this, as I mentioned, the project started in uh, November of uh, 2022 and will last until March uh, 2026. Uh, end of last month, we've uh, created a draft in-plan practice and a draft capacity building program, which we've tested and will soon start rolling out. And we expect a first round of uh, external capacity buildings happening in uh, September of this year, after which we will also start recruiting some potential replicators to start testing out uh, the method across Europe, so beyond uh, the, the initial five countries uh, that we will be uh, spearheading the project in. Uh, as I've said, the 
the mechanism or the method itself ba basically uh, focuses around the integration of several elements of planning around the central pillar of spatial planning, providing a lot of mechanisms for their actual enforcement. Uh, so this can include both the alignment of spatial plans with national infrastructure plans, with uh, mobility and transport plans, and of course with energy and uh, climate plans. This can also include air quality plans and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, an additional element to this will also, of course, be the alignment of the planning processes it, uh, themselves with uh, both local uh, budgets, so specific budget lines within uh, the local and regional budgets, as well as uh, available resources on the EU level uh, from things like the co uh, cohesion funds, uh, operational programs, uh, and so on. Uh, in practice, this basically means uh, selecting measures from existing documentations, for instance, sustainable energy and climate action plans. This can also be sustainable urban uh, mobility plans, uh, climate protection plans, and so on and so forth. Uh, determining which measures are suitable for the integration into spatial plans. So some will be, some won't be. For instance, capacity building will be very difficult to integrate, whereas anything related to a higher standard of construction will be uh, easy. Well, easy, uh, possible. Uh, and these measures need to be translated into a language that the spatial plans can accept and uh, they need to be integrated within them. Of course, the process itself isn't as easy and it includes several steps between them. So the measures that will be uh, proposed for integration have to be deeply analyzed and technical documentation uh, justifying their inclusion needs to be uh, added. In some cases, this will be easier, in some cases more difficult, depending on the uh, national legislation surrounding the spatial planning processes. Uh, the selected measures then have to be, as I've said, prepared and uh, integrated into a spatial plan, which, which is then developed and uh, at, at least submitted to a public consultation process after which it gets uh, finalized and formally adopted by a city uh, or municipal county or a county council depending on the level. Uh, in order for no surprises to uh, happen during the whole process, continuous communication with, uh, with the city, with uh, the spatial plan, uh, the spatial plan developers, uh, as well as the local and regional stakeholders, needs to be uh, maintained. Uh, these are very sensitive processes, and there's a lot of interest at play. So this can be a rather long and complex procedure. So uh, timely and consistent uh, communication is uh, key. Uh, we do have some experience with this uh, already, so we do have some uh, initial results, which I will also present a bit later. Uh, so for one city, uh, we have already uh, developed the, the guidelines necessary to uh, integrate uh, the energy and climate measures into spatial plans, uh, and the measures have been integrated, the spatial plan has been accepted, and the area is now being developed. The process basically started with us uh, going through the city's sustainable energy and climate action plan. Uh, and then, as I've said, identifying measures that can be integrated directly or indirectly. And uh, some of them uh, were then assessed in more detail. For instance, uh, one of the measures was a push for uh, a degasification of the heating. A grid which basically required a lot of spatial assessments of uh, the territory and uh, the, the spatial assessment of the heating demand in order to justify the inclusion of uh, low carbon uh, heating zones. So as I've said, the process is fairly complex uh, and uh, does take a, a bit of time and I'm really uh, aware of the, the time we have, so I will wrap everything up. Uh, so as, I, as I've mentioned, the process has been tested uh, already, uh, even though the project is uh, quite uh, young and we do have some, uh, some uh, initial uh, successful results from uh, two cities. Uh, the first one I've very briefly presented and the second one is the city of Zagreb, the Croatia's capital, in which we have created uh, some special spatial plans uh, for limited areas of the city, which will basically now be uh, forced to be turned into 100% uh, renewable uh, districts, uh, so basically no CO2 emissions uh, from uh, the from energy production uh, on site. Uh, 
uh, the draft methodology uh, and the draft capacity building plans uh, have been developed and uh, tested, and we will be we will uh, slowly start to roll out the two-stage capacity building process. Uh, so, as I've said in the first stage, we will train uh, our uh, multipliers. So these are the energy, climate, and/or development agencies, which will then pass the knowledge on to the municipalities, uh, cities, and regions uh, that they uh, work with. Uh, more news on this will come very soon. As I've said, we plan to. Uh, roll this out uh, latest by September uh, of this year. And if you are interested in more information on this project, you can follow us on uh, the InPlan website as well as on social media through our uh, hashtag. And if you have any uh, additional information, you can get in touch uh, via my email. I have rushed through this a bit because uh, the webinar is supposed to end soon and we should leave at least a little bit of time for uh, questions and answers. So this is me. Thank you very much, Thomas Love. Yes, you're right. We're actually we're supposed to end uh, right now, but I think if it's okay with our speakers, we might just take a couple of questions. Um, I don't know if any of you need to to rush away. Hopefully not. Um, let me see. So we had one question just really quickly. If the slides will be made available, and the answer is yes, the slides will be made available. So you can find them on the Build Up website um, in a day or two later today or tomorrow. Um, and we'll go to just a couple of questions so quickly here um first one for for julia um question if we do not make it to submit an application for the approaching deadline will there be a chance to apply at a later stage yeah thanks for the question um yeah of course as i mentioned this uh, application deadline for tomorrow is for the third uh, learning cycle but we do have four so luckily there's still a chance uh, the fourth will run uh, from may 2024 so ideally i think the application time will be at the very beginning of 2024 so keep uh, updated uh, by looking at the website okay. um and actually a follow-up question i can ask as well is uh, in order to participate do lras need to have an executive project or can they participate just with an idea Yeah, uh, thanks again. I what well, uh, an idea is sufficient. Of course, uh, it's important to know at least what uh, the measure that you want to implement is in general terms, but you don't need to have already evaluated, for example, you don't have to have audited buildings or to have a full scale uh, impact assessment of the measure. You just need to have an idea, for example, refurbish X number of schools or uh, change the street lighting in that area of the city, and uh, that is that suffices for applying to Project Plus. Great, thank you. Um, okay, a question for for Thomas Love. Um, how can other cities, regions, and their agencies get involved in in plan? Yeah. So, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, well, we, as I said, there will be a capacity building uh, program uh, opening up around uh, September uh, of this year, where we plan to teach uh, agencies, so uh, climate energy development, uh, about this process and how they can implement uh, the process in their territories. Uh, cities and regions can also get in touch with us uh, if they need any support uh, specifically from any of the project partners or if they want to learn more about this so that they can pass this information also uh, on to their planning departments or to their uh, to their agencies uh, so yeah I mean we will be looking for a, a lot of uh, replicators and a lot of uh, additional pilots to, to test this project in and uh, if anybody's interested uh, feel free to get in touch either directly to uh, with me or uh, through the project website. Um, so another question, actually, this is a, a question from myself, and it's uh, directed at, at all at all speakers. Um, and it is it's a very broad question. Um, so in your opinion and with your experiences, what do you think is key to successful knowledge transfer in the energy efficiency of building sector? And are there some aspects that could be improved, specifically in terms of strategy? Uh, maybe we can maybe we can start with Lerta. Would you would you repeat the, the questions once again? Sure, What's sure, sure. Yeah. 
So uh, it's a broad question, but in your opinion and with your experience, what do you think is key to successful knowledge transfer in the energy efficiency of building sector? And is there something um, that we could improve? Yes, uh, I already presented in the in the presentation in the slides before the key uh, to the successful implementation of the projects is the uh, transfer of the experience. Uh, all the projects uh, there are in, in energy efficiency projects in the buildings. All the buildings are specifics. Uh, they are. Uh, they may be uh, similar to each other, but they are still unique. And the transfer of the transfer of experience of implementation of energy ex, uh, efficiency standards from one building to another, it's very important for the users and for the implement, implementers and for uh, the way how these standards are being apply, applied, which are the challenges and which are the the benefits and results. Uh, all of us needs to reach the results as soon as possible and to see the benefits of implementation of energy efficiency in the buildings, uh, the, the sooner the better. And that's why this transfer of uh, information from one project to another is very important because we may, um, uh, let's say, we may uh, learn from the mistakes of each other. And these are the, the, the mistakes where will not be replied to the, uh, to the other projects. Uh, and also, not only this, but also the uh, uh, transfer of the information between the industry of, and academia is very important. The industry nowadays do not have the, uh, the let's say, the time, the, uh, the, the needed time to do all the experiments. In this case, the, the, the collaboration between the academia and the industry is very important. The industry shall be um, uh, aware that financing the academia to do the experiments, the needed experiments, is very important because they may use these results coming from academia and apply them to the industry without waiting so long for the results in the building itself. Thank you, thank you. Um, so maybe the same question actually to, to Julia and Tomislav. Uh, maybe Julia wants to start if you have something different you'd like to add. Yeah, sure. Uh, building what Black already said, which is, I, I totally agree with. I think that um, in order to um, be successful, <clears throat> we need to, especially in Europe and in the context of local and regional authorities, uh, we need to um, overcome the language barriers, which, uh, as I said in my presentation, is still a problem in small municipalities, especially rural ones. Uh, and both in communicating the opportunities that are available at European scale and in meeting their demands. So in also catering for um, organizing, for example, a knowledge transfer in the local language. And I think communication is very important uh, because we have some champions. So those uh, cities or regions or municipalities that are members of the big networks that follow BINDAP but that are uh, in the circle of the EU funding. But there are so many others that have no idea that this world exists and we have to be better in reaching out to them. Uh, and I think this is on us to make sure that uh, um, they are reached and listened to uh, when it comes to their needs. Um, yeah, I think this is very important. Thank you, thanks. Uh, Thomas Love, do you have something you want to add? I'll be very brief. I think peer learning is incredibly important here. Uh, I think learning from people that are in a similar situation uh, as you are, that have managed to overcome issues that you're also facing uh, within a similar context is key. I think it's uh, quite important to listen to uh, positive experiences from your surroundings. It's uh, very often you will have uh, positive experiences from Europe's north uh, being preached to Europe's south. Uh, a lot of the uh, successful applications aren't really uh, applicable. Uh, sorry, the, the successful cases aren't really applicable uh, across across the spectrum. So I think listening, as uh, Julia mentioned, to people speaking your own language, uh, giving you relatable uh, cases and, 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 and showing how things can actually be achieved within a similar context to yours is of uh, great help. And I think 
more initiatives such as this are needed. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we'll, we'll wrap up in just a second. We have, we got uh, one last question just arrived from the audience. Um, they say, thanks for very interesting presentations. Space heating remains by far the largest end use in most countries, but do you see also an increasing interest of regional or local authorities in solutions for summer comfort or space cooling, either in planning or investment schemes? So I suppose this is more for Julia and, and Thomas Slav. I, I can jump. Yeah, I can. I, yeah, no, go ahead, Thomas Love. Uh, I mean, I can mention, so uh, Croatia, for instance, uh, is a country that has uh, very, very hot summers and very, very cold winters. Uh, and unfortunately, there is no district cooling, for instance, happening here. I don't think there is a district cooling system uh, south from Vienna. Uh, there are a lot of talks about uh, district cooling and about providing solutions uh, to cooling. But uh, cooling is still seen as a luxury. And most of the emissions, most of the issues are still uh connected to heating and uh, one more thing cooling is mostly handled uh, via split system heat pumps so air to air heat pumps across europe which although not ideal are at least not a direct cause of co2 emissions uh so i think that heating is still seen as the primary issue uh on all levels thank you and julia you wanted to add something yeah, just very quickly from my side, um, so far until the last learning cycle, I think specifically we didn't have any application that was looking at uh, space cooling, but uh, I, I agree that uh, it is um, an issue that will come up more and more, especially in the South, like Thomas have uh, mentioned. Uh, we uh, usually see applications talking generally or generically about uh, home renovation, so that includes also uh, uh, cooling and heating, <laughs> but uh, I, I can't wait to open the applications from the uh, deadline tomorrow to see if that comes up a bit more uh, promptly. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, actually, on that note, uh, and later this year in July and August, Build Up will cover um, on the topic of the month renewable cooling solutions. So that will be something to uh, to keep an eye out for. Um, okay, so we're about 11 minutes past our anticipated ending point, so I think we'll have to end there. Um, so that would really like to extend a, a big thank you to uh, all our speakers and also to the audience, of course, for attending today's webinar. Um, again, you will be able to find um, the recording and the slides together uh, on the Build Up portal in a, in a day or two, and of course on our YouTube as well. Um, and actually, uh, we will have, uh, to let you know, we'll have our next webinar on Tuesday next week, it's part of a webinar series um, brought to you by the Drive Zero project uh, called Circular Talks, and it's on Tuesday starting at 10 a.m. It's called Let's Talk Circular Social and Affordable Housing, so uh, go check that out. Thank you again to everyone, and we wish you a really pleasant end to your week. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye.